This war in Ukraine has shown a lot of hypocrisy in the Western world. In this video, I want to concentrate the way Africans who were trying to flee the war were treated in the borders and in the nearing countries. However, this war shows a lot of hypocrisy apart from that. Now, let me first show you what happened to Africans in the Ukrainian borders and in Poland. White people first, Indian people, Arabic people, before black people. As long as you are black, no one likes you. We, we went to the, to the train station and they will, they will not let us in. And when, when they did let us in, they, they were like, you have to give us money because this is, this, is not, this is not free for you because you are foreign. This is not free for you. You have to pay for it. This is the um, gate of the border and people are not going in. Many people are here for four days, different countries, no matter who are. The soldiers are not even letting anybody in. Except uh, Ukrainians, babies, and their mothers. That's all. Nobody else is going in. No matter who, they're not asking you any question. They're not requesting anything. Not requesting any identification. And there is no embassy or from Nigeria or representative here to help. We call them, and they say they cannot do anything. They don't have the registration to come to the gate. So we are just here. Many of us have been here for five days, or for four days, or for three days, or for two days, and this gate is closed, and there is no way in. Yes, I experienced that. There's a lot of hostility um, from the white women. They really don't like us to be in the train. Somebody was telling me I have to stand up, I have to go out. If I don't, I'm not a Ukrainian, I shouldn't be in the train of a Ukrainian. I should find anywhere I should go to. So it's really, really, really sad that we have to face this. And they prefer their pets, their animals, even before a black man or a black woman. So it's really sad. I'm really traumatized, first of all. I really understand women first, then children first, then men. But not animals, not pets, before human beings. The people who were in Ukraine were mainly students. They were paying for it. It wasn't a free education. So these people are helping your economy and your country. And it wasn't like first Ukrainians and then everybody else. No, the white Europeans and others were allowed to live before. But Africans weren't even allowed into the trains. And as he said there, they were taking their dogs. I've seen pictures of them sitting with their dogs and cats. There's even reports on Western media that are saying how these people can leave their pets. What are you talking about? Pets, people are dying. And instead of allowing people to leave a war zone, you take your pet and tell other people to go back. Now, this is a wake up call. And a lot of Africans have finally realized how deep the racism is. It isn't just in the good times these people are racist. No, they will be racist in every situation they can. Even when there is a war, they will still keep their racism up. Now, let me show you some reactions to this. It's absolutely like, and it's not hilarious, but I'm saying it's absolutely hilarious because like, that's a part of how I talk. But like, it, it's crazy, I should say, that like, even during a literal crisis of war where an, a country is invading, that people literally can't put down the racism for one second. That is insane. You literally cannot just let another fellow human being on a train to flee a country when another super powered country is literally right on your door inside the, the house not even at your doorstep inside the house and you can't put your racism down for one second and say okay bro go ahead and get on white people still take priority it doesn't matter where you you guys all the time try to gaslight black people on this happening saying oh it's only american white people it, it overseas that never yes it does 10 times worse actually it is ridiculous like uh, like bro <sighs> whatever man okay everyone stop scrolling and let's talk about the Africans stuck in Ukraine. I think it says a lot that even during a war there is still racism. Racism decides who can get to safety. It decides how people can get to safety and who is prioritised. In these times, these awful trying times, racism still perpetrates. And that is a system of racism being a core factor, a key component in this system. So this tweet says Africans in Ukraine should volunteer to fight against the Russians. Ironically, the next tweet says, yes, this is what Ukraine is fighting for, to be a democratic and multicultural country free from Russian fascism, Ukraine flag, LGBTQ flag. I'm not sure why this is relevant here. Sir, 
or ma'am, whatever. Have you seen how Ukraine and Poland treated their international African students, who, by the way, are paying the double what Ukrainians are paying for college? Well, in the train, a lady just saw me and told me to get out of the train for no reason. The train we got into together. So when we get to the border, they just pack blacks like they pack us at one place for more than three hours. We are just standing there. And I asked her, why do I have to leave the train? She said they only let children and women into the train. And I, I asked her, am I a man? I'm also a woman. She said, oh, but I'm not a Ukrainian, so I should leave. When I say this conversation is for black people, I am very serious. I don't know about y'all, but this border situation disturbs me. Even in a time of war, racism doesn't take a rest. So we keep getting lessons and we're not learning. It's become apparent to me and it should be to you too that nobody's looking out for us. We are all we have. Now is the time for Africans and the African diaspora to unite and think of a plan on how we're going to look out for ourselves. How are we going to establish institutions to help ourselves in times like these? Whatever resources we have, we need to direct and focus them towards ourselves. Bell Hooks wrote her book in 81, Ain't I a Woman? And this is what she was talking about. Women first, but when it comes to African women, they are not women in their eyes. And another thing is like, I've seen those clips also where Ukrainians are asking for Africans to fight for them. And all these Europeans and American presidents are saying that Africans should do more. And now like, I think some white people went from South Africa to fight to Ukraine and they were making this post that Africans are fighting for you. No, <laughs> this is not an African war. But this war does show us just how deep it goes. And I did like the reaction that some of the African countries, for example, Nigeria, in the beginning they didn't do much, but in the end they sent some people down there and they helped people out. So did Jamaica and a lot of other countries. So we now have countries, we have nations, and we have institutions that could and should deal with this kind of situations. And we also need to build some sort of aid organizations. Usually when there is crisis like this, we send money to the people or somebody who helps them. But it would be better if we had institutions like Red Cross, you know, African versions that actually do the work and help people. Now, anyways, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please remember to subscribe, like, share and comment.